Hey, how are y'all doing today on this fine Sunday? I'm going to try something here. See, it, it says orientation is locked. Uh, Rotate device back. That's so, crazy. Trying to do sideways here, guys. Hey, I got Elmer Miller here, another former Amish that came out of my community. Well, you lived in a couple different communities, but if you guys remember, a lot of you guys have been following me for a while, have seen the interviews I've done from two, three years ago. I did, what, two videos with you? Yeah, we did two of them together. Uh, it was about, the last one was about two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. So yep. this is a Q&A, guys. So if you have any questions, Amish questions, I know we can't keep up with all of them. We just did a Facebook, Facebook Live, yep. and we couldn't even get to a third of them. But put your questions down there. We'll get to you guys if we can, and any questions you have about the Amish, and we'll try to answer them. Now, you were born and raised in the community I come from, Kenton. Correct. And later on, you guys moved where? Uh, to Gla Gladwin, Michigan. To Gladwin, Gladwin, Michigan. Okay, yep. and they were maybe they, a little they, bit more liberal. Yeah, they were a little bit more uh, lenient on their uh, rules and stuff. So, gotcha. uh, yeah, it was it was a lot nicer up there uh, than, than than the Kenton Amish there. Yeah. So I'm not sure there. Um, Stephen me, asked about what to, are the Amish in Southern Maryland. I I'm not familiar with. That. Uh, I think those are more like Swords and Trooper Amish. You want me to Very pull up my so I can. Check, yep. we can check the comments yeah, you can here. pull it up on YouTube. Just be, just be easy. But yeah, sorry, Stephen. I I think uh, I don't know a whole lot about the Maryland ones, but I think they're more like Elmer said, more old order, more strict. These oh, it don't it don't let me see the comments. Hey, how was it like when people of the world would visit? Well, we had a lot of people of the world visit. What we would call English people, but mm -hmm. we always did business with outsiders. Construction. Yep. Yep. Right? Yeah, so I mean, that's really how we survived. Uh, was you know just doing business business with um, you know English people. You know, if it, you know if it came down to selling selling food or or it came to building houses. I mean, that's how we made money. Yeah, a lot of people always ask how we made money in the Amish. I mean, we even did crafts, dog houses, yep. mini barns, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, if it's if it says Amish made, boom, you can put your number on there and you can sell it for good money. Yeah, yeah. That's how Amish made good money off of that stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, we got a lot more than we did on Facebook. Hey, Elmer, looking good, buddy. Hope to see you sometime this summer. Zachary, uh, you know what So, that? yeah, so he works for uh, uh, this investment company up in Marion. We do all their roofs for their uh, their buildings and stuff. Okay. And so they're building up downtown Marion. I don't know if you've been through there lately, but, yeah, he's doing good work. Oh, okay. Uh, but, yeah, good to see you, man. All right, let's go to the next one here. Daniel G., have you considered starting a church of former Amish with you as the priest? <laughs> We've gathered together quite a bit in your brother's yeah, house, former yeah. Amish, and had Bible studies. But mm -hmm. you, know, know. you know, that's something that I've, I've considered myself is, um, you know, you go to a lot of churches and, and you kind of get, you know, uh, you know, different, you know, weird vibes from different people. And so I've thought about like making a church to where I mean I wouldn't be the preacher I'd probably get you to do it but um, just to welcome everybody in yeah. it doesn't matter who you are what color you yeah. are what race you are it doesn't matter uh, and because we see too much of that yeah. in today's society to where I, I think it would be a good good thing and you probably feel that way just because of how they were growing up in mm -hmm. the older Amish how we were the special ones yep. and we didn't really affiliate ourselves with even other Amish that were more liberal yeah, so it's something where it we we were like say like where I was from like man we were we were the we were the uh, the best best Amish like best Christians ever right and man the ones that could drive skid steers and drive bicycles man they were they were going to hell is pretty much how it was right right you know how we were taught growing yeah. up and like there's a lot of like, Amish people they don't believe that English people uh, can go to heaven. Yeah, yeah. We, we I just shared my testimony earlier at a Baptist church mm -hmm. uh, this morning at at eleven o'clock, and one thing that, that I remember sharing was how prideful at a young young age I felt like, man, we're special, you know. Yeah, yeah. God favors us because yeah. we got the most rules, mm -hmm. and those other Amish that allowed, like, let's say, you know, brighter lights on their buggies, yep, windshields, yep. and and all all of these bright lights and everything, and then they had these lay down collars on yep, their shirt. Yep. <laughs> See, we. We viewed them even at a, as early as I'd say age four or five. I would view those Amish as, oh man, you know, yeah. they're, they're yeah, you, gotta, you gotta stay away from them. Yes. Yeah, and that's that's not, just not right. I mean, it's something where you uh, you're just brainwashed. You know, right? You know, brainwashed your whole life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's definitely a brainwashing for yeah. sure. Uh, let's see here. Well, man, there's a bunch of them on here. Do you guys like rap music? Nah, not really. No, nah, I, I do. I, I listen to uh, 
you know, so uh, up in Gladwin, there's this guy named uh, uh, N- uh, NF. Uh-huh. His name's Nate Firestein. And so growing up, he got bullied a lot. And okay. so he's a he's he used to do Christian rap, and then he, uh-huh. now he just does regular rap. And he's actually really good. Uh, but we um, actually worked for his parents and his sister. Oh, really? Yeah, I fished with his sister before, back when I was Salamish. Hello, Rob. Uh, Rob Fox says hello from Urbana, Ohio. That's not yeah. far from here. Yeah, we just uh, did quite a bit of work down in Urbana. I love this question. Uh, Sauce Boy says, "Are all Amish Christians? Well, they use the Christian label, <laughs> but are they Christians? No, no, because they don't follow Jesus. Yeah. They don't follow the Bible. They follow forefathers. We were told mm-hmm. we had to honor our forefathers, mm-hmm. and that meant staying Amish the way we were yeah. raised. So, I would say they're more of uh, well, it's obviously religion." But they follow forefathers rather than Jesus. So even though there's groups like that that use the Christian label, I call it borrowing the Christian mm-hmm. label, that doesn't mean they're Christians because they don't follow Christ. Right. And so that's, that's actually something I was just thinking about is, um, you know, we thought, you know, no matter what we do in life, as long as we have these Amish clothes on, we stay with the Amish and we follow them rules, man, you just hope you get to heaven. And uh, <laughs> that's just something where, right. you know, you... It's that's not that's not how it works. Like you yeah. don't have that personal relationship with God, uh, the way you do out here, uh, because you know you, like, this is kind of how I look at it. The Amish, they they kind of brainwash you. You have to go through the bishop to get your approval to get to heaven. Right. That's pretty much. That's how right. I. That's right. how I get it. Well, or take it because if you get in trouble, you got to go ask the bishop for forgiveness, which is which isn't right. Vote. To be forgiven, they mm-hmm. don't believe that Jesus will forgive anyone mm-hmm. if the church if they were in good standing with the church yep. and be forgiven by that. So if somebody passes away or dies while they're in the ban, they don't have no hope for you. Yeah, because you wasn't in. See how they take the judging in their own hand? They vote mm-hmm. to, for, to forgive you. Yeah. So they clearly believe that they have to forgive you before the Lord can yep. forgive you. And so I mean, talking about first the shunning thing. I mean, you can be shunned for two weeks or so. And and they think you know you you're 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 cool again. They'll keep it keep an eye out eye out on you. Like I get caught you know using a power tool or or driving you know driving a truck or something. And so what happens is they will they will vote in the church, and they will be like, hey, do you think he's okay to come back into the church and be part of the church again? And if Eli doesn't like me, and he's gonna say no, boom, it just. It, it washes that clean. Yep. Like I almost, I almost couldn't get baptized because my beard was. I had my beard shaved clean, and in and, and the Amish, we were supposed to have a little bit of stubble, and because of that, they almost did not baptize me because there was one guy. One. He, he did not like me. <laughs> There's one guy, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't think he should get baptized because his beard needs to be longer." Uh. You know. And so afterwards, you know, the bishop and the preacher they all came up to me and they talked to me and they said, "Hey, you know, you come back next Sunday." And or two weeks from now, and your beard better be longer. So my my hair grows pretty fast, and man, I came back two weeks later, and it looked like I was a new married man. <laughs> I was like, I was like, dude, I was like, I don't care. So I let it grow for like, I think I let it grow for like two months. Yeah. Until finally, my sisters are like, dude, you ain't going to church if you don't cut your beard off. So I shaved it clean, and so one Sunday I come in looking like this, and the next time I come with a clean face. So I just I just did it because I I could. You didn't but, care no more. No, I just didn't care. So a lot of people have been asking me on social media, hey, I can't really grow a beard. If I was Amish, would that be okay? Well, if you can't grow a beard, you can't grow a beard. Right. So something like, so how Eli has his beard right here, um, that would be accepted, except he couldn't shave down here. So yeah. how I have mine, I have mine shaved here. I have a mustache here. And so this is an acceptance. But how Eli has his uh the only thing that he would have to change is he'd have to grow underneath bottom. here. Yep, which is yeah. which is a, it's just so stupid. Yeah, but and, and you... so you see a lot of Amish, but I was just I just said at this horse sale, they had they brought this beard down all the way down to where the ball of their chin was sticking out, and, I've it, seen lo- and it looked that. so weird, dude. Yeah, I've seen him do that. Did they ever give you an explanation why they could not have a mustache? Um, yes. So from what I understand is, um, so back when. Uh, the Anabaptists and the Mennonites came over to America, so they were getting persecuted by the um, the British soldiers and the England the, the, o- o- overseas, wherever they come from, and so they wanted to be different. So they that's why they cut that mustache off because you know the soldiers had had a mustache. So that's my understanding. So I heard I heard another former Amish say exactly what you just said, but he went further and said back then in the 17th century. When they were being persecuted, we're mm-hmm. coming home from the army. 
they were putting salve in it or whatever. Yep, the they would wax, curl it up. Wax, right? yeah. yep. So it was all fancy and sticking up like the yep. worldly people, and they said, "Oh, we can't have that." <laughs> yeah, and so that's something, man. I, I, I don't. I think that you know, if you do that, that's disgusting. But I mean, if you can rock it, right. dude, hats off to you, brother. So, I want to ask you, on on for all my YouTube followers here. I often share with them how, you know, they know my story of how I have to wear Amish clothing, go visit mm -hmm. my mom, yep, park yep. next door. So do you go visit your family? You know, I, I uh, so the first year and a half I uh, after I left, I, I did go back and I visited them. I think I visited them three times. Um, but then they finally, excuse me, finally they, uh, uh, they say, you know, if you don't come, if you don't have any plans of coming back, don't come back around. Uh, so now, if I if I would go visit them, I would go unannounced. Uh, but I've I've tried contacting my family, you know, calling them because they have a phone at the neighbors and yeah. stuff. Um, and I've called them, left them messages and stuff to see how everything's everybody's doing and stuff. And I it's been going on for two and a half years. Um, so I haven't really seen my family or spoken with my family in two and a half years. Okay. So that's yeah, been a minute. But if you do, you'd wear Amish clothes, or you just kind of nah, like nope. I'd be like I'd be like no, it's just something where. Yeah, I wear uh, like nice black dress pants and a shirt like this, uh, a nice white dress shirt or something. Yeah. But man, I I'd be like you know because they they want me to respect them, and uh, they want me to wear their clothes. But when they come to my house, they don't wear my type of clothes. So why do I have to follow their follow their orders and they can't follow mine? Right. right. So <laughs> that's how I look at it. Um, if you can't respect me then yes you know deep down yes it might be the right thing to do but why that's just if, if you can't yeah. accept me in these clothes then you can't accept me in my amish clothes yeah a lot of former amish i know personally look at it just the way you mm -hmm. described it. mike is asking is there a limit how long the beard can be after marriage you don't after it. after marriage or uh, after marriage you don't uh cut it you know down here but you you shave it you know down uh, you you keep you know keep it clean up here. Uh, you don't like how I have mine get getting up into my cheek cheekbones here. You have to you know shave it down like this. Um, but before you're married, you can only like different communities are have different rules. Um, so how I have mine, that's that's acceptable. Um, one thing you're not supposed to have is um, how I used to do it. They they knew I could grow a beard. I used to you know get big old sight burns and and have a little goatee so i i shave this and man i get in trouble with that all the time they hated that didn't yeah <laughs> whereas you trying to stir the pot yeah stirring the pot stirring the kettle man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was i was a troublemaker do you do i all talk about that you want to see a picture of my hair what? bull cut you should i show them yeah you got one yeah i do yeah bring it up <laughs> if you got them on there show everybody what yeah. you look like back when you was on let's see that was only about, what, four years, five years ago? Yeah, four and a half years ago. Man, I just don't look the same anymore. So this is the this is the night I left. I don't know if you guys can see that. So this is the night that I got picked up. I took my suspenders off because I thought I was cool. <laughs> um, next day, I went and got my hair cut. This is the hilarious one. Look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I was clean shaven. I don't know if you guys can see that either. But, yeah, so that's uh, me uh, four and a half years ago. So yeah, that's my cool. So how you can see how my uh, hair is right above my ear. Um, so we were supposed to have it, you know, halfway ha covered, covering half of, uh, of ear. our ears. So what we would do is we would take scissors and cut them straight over the ears. And man, we were cool, man. So <laughs> now I noticed, and, and it looks so stupid. Right now I noticed something in your picture. Mm -hmm. You already had English clothes on. Yep. So th before your haircut. Yep. So, we so uh, my friend picked me up at like eleven thirty that night, and we went straight to Walmart because back then they were still twenty four hours a day, uh, open twenty four hours a day. Right. And uh, we went straight to Walmart, got me some jeans and a nice nice shirt, and that's 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 what happened. In your Amish home, traditionally, did you guys use toothpaste and toothbrush? You know, that's something that I never did before i mean i i did it i would do it on, occasionally on on a sunday um but man that's that's something that wasn't pushed on right uh like now i i religiously brush my teeth you know twice a day yeah. um 
I used to, you know, not not do it. Uh, but now I deal with customers a lot and I'm like, you know, I hate when somebody comes up to me and, and they're talking to you and you can just smell their breath from 10 feet away. <laughs> <laughs> like I've had Amish people working for me, like subcontractors working for me and you know, they're 20 feet away, man. And it's just like, are you serious? Like brush them freaking teeth, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's now, just, it's crazy. Share with everybody how uh-huh. you do it as a ex Amish, mm-hmm. you do construction Yep. and you have actual Amish subcontractors. Yeah. So I, I, I own a, a roofing company and we do uh, you know work all over the state of Ohio and so we get a lot of uh, Indiana Amish that uh, work for me and uh, I, I know a few of them and you know it's something where it depends what community they're from so if I try to go over to Kenton and where we where we grew up in man dude they they chased me off like I just needed some uh, lumber the other day because we were restoring an old barn right and I had to send one of my workers out there and the only thing I had to watch was I couldn't send them out with my truck so I had to send them out with a different truck to go pick up the lumber because they, they yeah so they see my truck pull in there they know who it's for wow <laughs> so you know it's something where you, it it all depends what Amish they're from uh, like like the Bell Center in Amish over here. I go over there, you know, they fix my, uh, the, the machine shop over there. Um, they, they fix, you know, my equipment and stuff like my, you know, power washers and chainsaws, whatever. Um, and they, they fix them. They, they don't care. Yeah. Uh, it, it all depends what community they're from. Right, right. Uh, th- this, this is hilarious. This guy says, uh, Mr. Yoder, dinosaurs were real. I did a video the other day mm-hmm. on social media. Uh, that the Amish, somebody asked if the Amish believe in dinosaurs, and I said, no, they don't, and I still don't either. I yeah. add some, added some humor. I, I really don't care, whatever. Yeah. I got grilled. Nuh-uh. Like, you wouldn't believe. You know, that's something where a lot of people ask me, are dinosaurs real? And I say, no. They're like, well, what about all these boons they uh, you know, find? I'm like, you know what? I I can design a house if I want to. I can go out in that bone yard and I can find whatever bone I want. And I can put it together. Bingo! And I, and I can make a I can make a dinosaur. It's just that it's all you know. I think it, it, in, a, in in this society today, uh, they kind of brainwash you into believing what you think. Yep. And the thing is, is everybody says, "Well, you know, they were they're millions and millions of years old." No, the Earth has only been here for what. Uh, not the Earth, but uh, well, they're gonna gonna tell you what the scientists. Say. Yeah, I don't believe in scientists. <laughs> yeah, so scientists, you know, you know, yeah, the scientists get paid to lie. That's how I look at it. The main video was uh, for comedy mm-hmm. humor. I, I do yeah, a lot yeah. of humor, you know, jokes, right, and stuff, right. dad jokes, uh-huh. and so that's what it was based on. And I realized what kind of society. It's not just Amish. Mm-hmm. How we were raised, you know, gossiping about one another, slandering one another. Right. And after I looked at the the comments, there's over a thousand comments on that video, and they are <laughs> grilling me. The humor went whoop right over their head. Wow. And, and oh, and all of you guys that were sending me pictures, screenshots, and emailing them to me from out in Utah, I still don't believe it. I saw the picture that you showed me, but I never saw a dinosaur. Yeah. There's something where I'm like, like yeah, there's animals that go, di- you know, that that go distinct on a right. you know, every year. But it's something where you just, I, I, I just don't think so. Yeah. Let's see here. You guys need to follow answers in. <laughs> I don't, man. <laughs> you know, we talk about being deceived in Amish religion. You see how many people believe in this garbage? Mm-hmm. They're A more deceived than the Amish people. Yeah. I don't care for your clay plaster idols. Just <laughs> uh, learn the woodworking. You, do, you, do do I think do you think I should learn to do woodworking at all? You know, if you can if you can uh master that craft, Jesus was a woodworker. Yep. Um you know, he was a carpenter. He was a carpenter, and, that's right. And his dad was a carpenter. Um I believe when you built something with your hands, yeah. It doesn't matter when you this is something that I've been thinking about lately. A lot of people don't understand. They don't understand the 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 the, the, the craftsmanship that goes into building a house, building buildings, building roads, whatever it might be. Um, and a lot of people don't understand how uh, how important that is. Man, Right. I drive down the road on a daily basis, and I see construction workers, and I'm like, I'm like hats off to you guys. Yeah. Because there's not enough people out there that do that. So if you can learn woodworking, do it. Do it, man. Not no. even woodworking, just anything. No, if, you, if you can work with your hands, 
God bless you with two good hands. And there's a lot of people out there that only have one arm that, you know, got chopped True. off or were born without an arm. And they wish they would have two arms. And there's too many people that don't work with their, their, their two good hands. So if you can work with two good hands, do it. I hope you're not for real there, uh, King. I just crashed my car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, He's the right. next two things we want to talk about. Uh -huh. The toilet paper and dating. You know how many Swartzen Troopers... Now, we had toilet paper in Canada, yeah, yeah, as we, you know. Yeah, we did too. You know how many former Amish from the Swartzen Trooper Amish said, nope, we had to use newspapers, and I'm thinking... How in the world is newspapers not considered too worldly <laughs> when it's printed by the newspaper right. companies? So that's something I don't understand. So my dad grew up, um, you know, his his father was very tight, um, and they used newspapers, grass. Uh, they lived in so my my parents uh, my so my my dad when he was six years old. Uh, there's actually a book about it. Uh, my dad and his family they they lived in South America, Paraguay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I want to go visit that one day. Um, but they lived over there and they didn't really have anything over there. So yeah, they used newspapers wow. uh, or they would use, you know, their hand and they wipe it on the leaf or something. Yeah. He's told me that story before. So wow. yeah. I, I was just shocked how many different sports and tuber Amish, very strict, even a little bit more strict than what we were mm -hmm. just to say that I'm like, are you kidding me? Like we, we had a roll out in the outhouse and a roll out in the barn for the men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's something where... <laughs> I was just watching this uh, this show. It's called Spartacus. If you haven't watched it yet, you gotta watch it. It's about a gladiator. Okay. Um, but in that show, I saw um, it, it was you know they had these slaves and they would have this corn uh, this corn cob, and what they would do is they use that corn cob and they put a little little piece of because uh, somebody said something about a corn cob. <laughs> they put a little piece of cloth on there and these the slaves would hand it hand it and they they, they take turns. They, they used the same corn cot on a stick. Do what? Then, then they would, you know, just put a piece of cloth over it, and then they put it back in a bucket and wash it. You gotta be kidding! Yeah, I, I, I saw that in the show. I was like, I was like, if that is how it was, that's just crazy. But, but I, you know, some Amish people they they do use corn cobs for wiping. Yep. yep. See, so many people ask me on my channel here, and I was like, why I mean, do they keep asking about yeah. corn cobs? They probably saw the show yeah. you're talking. Yeah, but it's got it's got to hurt. I mean, it's got to hurt. But I mean, after a while, I mean, it's just like working with your hands. You get calluses on them, and you get used to it. So well, back in the field, <laughs> if I had corn fodder, you know, corn, you, you use whatever you can. Yep, yep. It it backfired on me one day. I was out in the field. I mean, mm. I had to go bad. It was a bad day, and I used the horse's tail. Oh no! And then I was standing on that neck yoke thing or whatever, uh -huh. and you know those horse flies. <laughs> And it here comes not, the tail no. and smack me right across the face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's something. So my dad was very immune to some stuff. And he could go, you know what, uh, you know what uh, the stinging nettles are? Yeah. You know what those oh, yeah. are? Uh, yeah. What did we call it in the Amish? I can't remember the German word for it. Uh, whatever it was. But anyways, he would, he would use that. He could use poison ivy. It didn't matter. Like he Didn't affect him. No, it didn't affect him. Like He, he didn't care. So, so my dad was now, very immune. The dating, dating that we discussed earlier on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people ask about this bundling thing. Mm -hmm. We kind of talked about the differences because every Amish community has their own differences in, in, in dating. The rules, regulations when it comes to dating. Yeah. So, what were you used to when you were growing up Amish? Did Excuse you date me. an Amish girl, by the way? I went on one date with an Amish girl. I asked some of my buddies would bet me. Uh, you know, on, you know, all the time they'd be like, oh, you, don't, you won't ask this girl out. And I'd be like... You know what? What do I have to lose? I didn't care if it was a second cousin or whatever it was. I just take it. I didn't want to do it. I just take him up on that bet. So I took one girl on a date, and I said never again. Like it was just so weird. Like we were sitting beside each other like this, you know, for two hours, and you don't know the girl uh, that well. What do you talk about? It's just so weird, so awkward. A lot of silence. Uh, yeah, it's just a lot of silence. And the thing is, is you know, we're sitting here. And ten feet away, her parents were living sleeping in the bedroom because we're sitting on the couch, you know. And uh, you know, ten feet away, her parents are in the bedroom listening to our conversations. It's just, it's so weird. Uh, but like, so in we're so I grew up in Kenton, so for, uh, where, where Eli was born and raised at. Excuse me. Um, and so we're, we're in in Kenton. You would, the girl would sit on the guy's lap. On like right. on his right leg or left leg, where he changed it right. off, whatever. Up in Michigan, uh, Glatwin there, 
uh, we could sit beside each other like this. Uh, so it all depends where you're from. So there's a lot of people that, you know, for Swartz and Trooper Amish and stuff, like Old Order Amish, they call they, they have what they call bundling. And so on a Saturday night, I believe, um, they come over, the guy comes over to the girl's house and they uh, they sleep in the same bed, but they have to put a board in between. So a that's, board yeah, in between. A, a board in between, yeah. That's called uh, bundling. Bundling, yes. Yep, bundling. Yeah, I know the Swartz and Troopers practice the bundling a lot. Yeah. Eli, what's your football team? College or NFL? Uh, <laughs> well, let's just cover both. College is Ohio State. Yeah. I'm all about Ohio. Yeah. So, obviously, in NFL, Browns and, yeah. and Bengals. I'm mainly a Bengal fan, yeah. but it looks like they're not going to make the playoffs. So, I'm going to root for the Browns from here on out because they just, woohoo, finally made the playoffs. Wow. I didn't think that would have gonna happen in my lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. This is something where uh, I, uh, so I, I love Ohio State for college. Uh, and C.J. Stroud, he just, uh, you know, he, 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 he got drafted last year by the Texans. Um, so this year the Texans, they just, you know, they just made it into the playoffs last night. So I'm rooting for the Texans. I've been rooting for them all year. So uh, Ohio State uh, and, and, and the Texans. How about them lions, says Anthony. I don't like nothing <laughs> on the state up north. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually talking about that, so uh, Monday night, it's, it's the playoff, uh, yeah, the, the championship, championship, championship game between uh, Michigan and uh, Washington. And as much as I don't like Michigan, uh, the Michigan team, uh, they're a bunch of cheaters, you know. <laughs> so, but they're the number one team in the country. I'm rooting for Michigan. <laughs> I am. You're shunned. <laughs> <laughs> so I just they're they're a good team. Their run game is good. Um, I, I I I just. I, a lot of people, you know, they, they say, you know, well, you know, Michigan is Michigan. I'm like, yeah, it is. But there's a great question for you. What's your, uh, or was driving a car, uh, where did that question go? Did driving a car scare you at first? It didn't, me. I, I'm fearless, man. You can put me, you can put me behind anything. I wrote Bulls for two years, um, and you can put me behind anything. So I got my license. The day I got my license, I jumped in a, and a 2500 and i had a, a 22 foot uh, enclosed trailer so i've been hauling trailers ever since <laughs> wow yeah so I, I it doesn't really matter to me i rolled my first car and as soon as i got my license i hit 120 mile an hour oh really yep so what is this and you know, that's something i love going fast what peyton he says i hear your belief but you and many others refuse to respond to the argument at hand clay rock plastic doesn't matter it's still a massive constant de decade long Kate perform globally or not? What is he even talking about? I, I don't know. I don't know what argument you guys are talking about. What? Well, right there. Sounds like an argument starter. No. <laughs> that's all right. We don't need to get into it, that. It's it's about the the dinosaur thing. Oh. They won't they won't let it go. Oh, I'm gonna right. shun all of them. That's <laughs> all right. So when when we you, all we all here's the thing, guys. You guys have that belief, but the thing is, is if you, if we would all believe the same thing, this world wouldn't go around, man. You can't sit there and argue, and you can't uh, make everybody believe the same thing. Here's the deal. God is real. Dinosaurs are not. That's that's our belief, okay? And so we can't we can't sit here and we can't just get all on the same page. Because if you guys are on the same page, it doesn't give us, give us nothing to talk about, guys. <laughs> I'll just turn the show over to you. Keep so, <laughs> so it's just, it's just, it's oh, just man. true facts, man. <laughs> I love this guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> he is talking about dinos. <laughs> oh, they crack me. I tell you, I love these guys, man. Yeah, it's all right. Dude. You know, it's, it's all good. We all have a different. We all, we hey, all think different. There, there's good. quite a few times on a uh, comment section here, and I get this a lot. Mm -hmm. How did the Amish treat gay people, or were there gay people? Did I'll be honest with you, before you answer, I didn't even know what that was until after I left the Amish. How about you? So... There was um, a, 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 a bishop out in Missouri. Uh, this is the only one that I really knew about. I mean, I, 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 like I knew a lot of English people before I left. We did construction. We built houses, whatever. So we were surrounded by them every day. So I knew what gays were. Um, and so is that something where uh, there's one Amish guy who was a bishop. And he was uh, screwing around with his own sons, two or three of them. But anyway, he's in prison now. Okay. But that so he was being gay with his own sons so that's really the only one that i know about okay. and there's actually an ex amish guy that i know that he he's uh he actually turned uh he, he turned gay okay um that's something where now 
I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree with it. I don't. Uh, it's not right. But here's the deep thing. So I can still be you know be nice to them, love them. Uh, and, and love them and stuff. But when you try pushing it on me and you think I, it's kind of like this. You, it's Bingo. it's just like the Amish. They brainwash you into believing that the Amish are the only uh, only Christian people and they're the only ones that are going to go to heaven. And so gay people, they think that you know everybody else has to go into um, to accept it. it, 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 it accept it. Right. It's, it's not acceptable. But you still have to love the people, no matter yeah. what. Like there, there's, I don't force my beliefs onto them. Mm-hmm. That's their they have a free will. But don't shove yours onto mine. Mm-hmm. That's the yep. Point. And so now, man, they just got they got so many letters and numbers on there. I don't even know how many how how many different things there are. Uh, I mean, I see people that are on uh, uh, on different things like you know different uh, Zoom calls and stuff, and they have they have to have their pronouns on there. I'm like, what do I even call you? Like, you're 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 a guy, you're a guy, and you're a girl, you're a girl. That's Some, just how it is. I just and, sometimes I call them he she's. Yep, and it's I just mean, it's just it's just ridiculous how far it has come. Does the Amish smoke weed? <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they yeah they do. <laughs> they grow it too. They grow it? Oh yeah, there's some Amish people that grow it. Yeah, Man, yeah, well, yeah them, them swords and trooper Amish up there in South Gladwin, Michigan. Do they smoke weed? Grow weed? Do they do they sell that stuff, man? Are you serious? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, they were crazy. Did they get? They got. They got bust. They got. They got sent to jail because they were driving a buggy and stuff. You know, drunk, drunk after butt, and I mean, they were just hiring a kite. Doing, you know, lots of them were doing pills and stuff too. So. Wow. See, yeah. it's in every culture. Ain't it? Yep. Different different communities uh, do different things. I communicate for the sake of understanding and picking someone's I, brain, not to make them understand. <laughs> You know any? I uh, don't know. Love the sinner, not the. Yep, that's it. That's exactly love the sinner, right. not the sin. I got, I got friends that are. Mm-hmm. So it, we, we love them. You know, yep. there's, there's always a loving way to agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. A loving way to do mm-hmm. it, always. And it's somewhere, man. Um, I don't know if you. Know, I, I, there's this guy. I, I, I won't mention his name. Um, he's built up a town close, close to here, um, and he's, he's a gay guy. Man, he's the nicest guy ever. But the thing is. We talk business. We don't talk about that stuff. There you go. Yep. You, you got to love them, man. Yep. And that's just that's just how you got to do it. Yeah, you got to hate the sin, but you got to love the people, man. Yes. Like, yes. That, that's what I'm saying. Like that church earlier we yeah. were talking about. I. That's the only way you can get them into the church. You know, just you know, love on, love on them, man. Uh, I'm gonna leave that question alone because I used to go into that all the time, and it just causes a bunch no. of. Yeah, I'm gonna stay away from it. Uh, all right. Let, let's just close in uh, the the whole like when you left. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing on, like a lot of other, from the liberal Amish communities, called me a liar sometimes. Mm-hmm. Oh, we all had a social security number. Somebody just said the other day on TikTok. Like, like I'm lying about saying I didn't have a social security number. Can you verify with everybody on here that there are multiple old order communities that did not, did in fact not have social security numbers? Yes. So, uh, Kenton Amish, where I was born and raised, Eli was raised here as well. Okay. We could not have a social security number. They went as far. We can't even get a, a deer license. Right. Because it has a number on there. But Glad went up there. We moved to Gladwin, Michigan when I was 12. When I was 17 years old, my my dad and mom took me to the social security office and me and my brother. And and they took us and, and they uh, they got us a social security number. They, they told us it's a tax exemption number. <laughs> it was a social security number. So there are a lot of Amish people out there. They do not have a social security number, and there's everybody says, "Oh, they gotta have one." No, they don't, dude. I didn't have a. I didn't even have a. So uh, I didn't have a birth certificate when I left. Um, yeah, my my parents might have had it, but there's a lot of like Kenton Amish, dude. They don't have a social security. They don't have a a, a birth certificate or nothing. And here's another one: they can't open a bank account if you don't have a birth certificate. Okay. And there's a lot of Amish people. They don't even have bank accounts. So what they do is one guy, somehow, they'll jump through the hoops, and they will get a bank account, and everybody will go into his bank account. They'll, they'll just keep track of how much money there that is in there. So there's actually in Kenton. You know him, Herman Stutzman. Yes. The wheelchair he, guy. Yep. He had what they call an Amish bank. Yep. He had an Amish bank. So everybody put, put money into Herman Stutzman's bank. 
Did he get interest like a bank? Would? I think I think he got interest. Yes, you got I, I, if, I, if, I, if I remember right, yes. Uh, remember. But my dad, he never went there. He he went to uh, the, this uh, up in Kenton. They had home savings and loan. Yep, and, that's where uh, we went. That's where a lot of Amish people went. They dealt yeah. with them and stuff. Um, Chris just Gladwin, not far. Yeah, go up and check uh, Miller Metal Sales up in Gladwin. Uh, that's my brother. That's my uh, my dad. My my uh, brothers work there. So uh, if you, if you swing in there, say say hi hi to him for me because I I can't get a hold of him. So, <laughs> but uh, do business yeah. with your uh, dad. Up yeah, there, huh? yeah. Go up there, man. My mom baits some good. You got if she if you go up there in the summer, uh, she lives out on Gasha Road. Um, you got to go out and check her baked goods out, man. She makes the best baked goods in the United States of America, man. Best bread they'll ever eat. <laughs> Everybody says. That, Here buddy. we go with the flat Earth again. With the what? Do the Amish uh, believe in a flat Earth? You know that's something uh, that we uh, we weren't taught much about history or right. uh, any uh, like uh, about the it didn't about, pertain about the globe. to them. No, yeah. so we would. I mean, we we would read. Uh, we had history books up until um, it, it covered everything up until uh, Pearl Harbor. Okay, and that's where it shut off. Okay. And so that's that's the only history that we read about. It was from Civil War. Uh, from the Civil War, or not, not, not Civil War, from, from when Columbus came to America, uh, when he founded America, to uh, uh, Pearl Harbor. That's the only thing we learned about America. Yeah. Um, beyond that, man, we didn't, we didn't learn nothing. Uh, and we only, we only learned about that. We would only have history books up until we would have it on, uh, I think it was Mondays and Wednesdays. That's the only time we would have history. I do remember my, the second, because I, I went to two different schools. The second Amish school I went to, it was newer. And they actually had the round ball earth in the mm -hmm. school on the desk. Mm -hmm. So your question, I know they got a round ball, but I'm not so sure they got a flat one laying there. Right. <laughs> and it's something where, uh, if you really think about it, you know, the sun rises in the, in the east and it sets in the west. Next morning it comes up in the east. That thing's flat. What's going to happen? Are you going to, are we going to spin? Are we going to go... You know, are we going to go around the circle? Are we going to, you know, be a pancake and, and, and be a plate, you know? It's just, it's, 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 it's a simple answer. And that's something where a lot of people, they will try to argue with that. Right. They did on my video. I did we just open that can of worms again? I we did. really just went back there. <laughs> that's right. It's, it's all right. <laughs> we got all day. It's all oh, good. <laughs> man. It's nice. all good. Yeah, I use flat maps all this time. <laughs> I'd be in the Big Bang Theory, somebody say, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. We could argue all day on this stuff. Are the Amish allowed to smoke? We'll get on that one. Uh, so, no, we're not. Uh, there's different communities that are. Um, right. Where I'm from, up in Glatwin there, uh, we, we couldn't smoke. Uh, South Gladwin Amish, uh, they were called Swartz and Troopers. Man, they smoked pipes and weed and whatever, you know. But, so, uh, up in Michigan, but just before I left, it was legal when it was, uh, cigarettes, I could buy cigarettes when I was 18. So, man, the, the day I turned 18, I went out to the barn, hitched up a horse, and I, uh, a young horse, and I said, ah, I'm gonna drive it, you know. And so, first thing I did, went up to the party store and bought, bought me a pack of cigarettes. And so, I go out behind the barn, you know, bought me a can of Axe Spray. Uh, bought a pack of big red gum, bought a, bought a pack of Marlboro Reds, and I, I would hide it behind the barn. I'd go back there and smoke cigarettes. I so thought, those were the items yeah, that you bought? Yeah, I thought I was so cool, man. Well, dude, you got to have the big red gum <laughs> and the axe. <Yeah. laughs> dude, that's just to hide the smell, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I know the, the Swords and Troopers would smoke different tobacco if it was a certain color wrap around their cigarettes. Nitrous. Nitrous, you must drive a honda or something he says what was the most surprising thing you learned when you left the amish community what was yours oh man there's a lot of surprising things i mean to find out you know how big i was, I was how very big surprised the world how big actually, the world is yeah you know we kind of learned about the united states and the states but when i saw there's more water than land and all these hundreds of other countries i was Blown away. Mm -hmm. It made me want to go visit all of them yep. and see how big the world yep. is. And that's something, I mean, same thing. Uh, you know, biggest surprise, really. I mean, it was just how different people are out here. Like, right. we're, we were taught, you know, they're just evil, they're mean. Like, we were taught when you leave the Amish, you're of the world. And so now, we're out here in the world. I mean, we live all in, the, we all live in the same world, okay? Um, we just have different beliefs. Uh, but now where we are and where the actual world is, 
you actually see the difference yeah. that we didn't see back when we were Amish. So right. that, that was really my biggest surprise for me because that's kind of what I was taught, uh, you know, we were taught growing up. So, like, now, you know, we look where we stand uh, and where, how far the actual, like, the, the world, the crazy world's gotten to. Right. So. Thank you very yeah. much, Derek. Um, the another another uh, big surprise for me was, so we we grew up very strict. The worldly people are are kind of you know of the world. You know they have no chance to please God. Mm-hmm. And I never experienced more acceptance and love. You know I was working at a power shop when mm-hmm. I first left. If I messed up, I didn't hear what I did on the farm. Right. Hey, it's okay. We'll clean that up. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I didn't experience a whole lot of that. I I experienced when I left the Amish. But the people that were of the world, more loving and more kind mm-hmm. than any see, Amish I ever. Yeah, see, that's something that I experience every day. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur now. Uh, I have employees and stuff. Like last summer, I had, you know, high school kids. You know, your son came and worked for me. Yep. Uh, he made he made a lot of mistakes. I could have sat there and I could have, how my dad did. I could have just ripped him a new one. But the best thing you can do is just be like, look, sit down with him, explain to him. Be like, hey, this is how we're gonna do it. You make a mistake, well, I'll, 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 I'll help you make it right. And so that's something that, uh, you know, after I left, same thing happened to me. People are just they're they're more, they'll they'll, they'll want to show you. Yeah, there's people out there that don't want to do that, mm-hmm. but you have to be willing to uh, teach the young young people uh, what you know what to do and how to handle life. Yeah. So yeah, like absolutely. I had I had a couple of employees that came to work last last year for me. 17 years old they didn't know nothing about credit they wanted to buy it they, they wanted to buy a truck and they didn't know nothing about credit you know and i said okay i said well you gotta open a bank account and stuff like that and so i'm like well that's a parenting issue and so you see a lot of that you know in in the in the english world you know the english society a lot of that doesn't you know i didn't know nothing about credit until two years uh, about two and a half years ago i finally opened my uh got my first you know uh loan uh and, and credit stuff and so that's something where you just have to be willing to teach other people. Yes. Have you been involved in helping anybody leave the Amish since you left? I have uh, helped, uh, I think, in the last four years. I haven't done anything. The last one I did was about a, the one I ex- exactly to. a year ago, okay. and that kind of turned out pretty crappy. Yeah. Um, but I've helped out, I think, like four or five of them so far. Okay. Um, and, 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 you know, it's it, it's it's nice to, to uh, you know help them, uh, you know, achieve something that they never believed that they could yeah uh, and it's just satisfying uh to just walk with them uh and just show them the way and just just show them how how much and how big you can actually be out here mm-hmm. and that's 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 very very satisfying to me i love i love helping people and uh so yeah how do you respond the first time you heard the scriptures scripture read in english, in english. Well, I was shocked. I was amazed. Yeah. The, the first time in, Eng- in English Bible amazed me because we really didn't have Bible studies in our German Bible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, man, the, I remember the first time I walked into the church. Dude, I didn't know what to think. I was like, this isn't even church. You know, there's mu- there's a piano for, for, uh, um, for, for, you know, when they sing the songs and, and now, you know. Music. Yeah, the, now the, the uh, church I go to, it's a non-denominational church. They have like 600 people that go there. And, uh, you know, they have, you know, a band up there. Uh, like you have know, the drums, guitars, and stuff, and 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 so it's it's just uh, like when you think about it, it's just like oh my gosh! Like I, I thought about you know going back, I thought about sneaking back into an Amish church sometime, and just sitting in the back or out on the outside of the window or something, just listening to it, to it, and just kind of kind of uh, re uh, you know just rethink the whole thing. And just, it's just the voice singing from the German songbook. It's no piano, no music, no guitar, none of those things. I know. The guy that helped me leave the Amish, he immediately took me to a Pentecostal church mm-hmm. where they were flopping around, speaking in tongues, <laughs> hooping and hollering. Yeah, I thought it was so demonic, I ran. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I that's, got some, that's, some, that's something I've never been to. You know, one one ch- a church that I've always wanted to go to. I love black people. I love black people, man. I think they're so. They cool. praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to go to a black church. They get I, fired I, up, man. Yeah, I bit a couple, uh, bit, bit a couple roofs and stuff. And I and I uh, I had a friend of mine. He went to one, and he's like in the front row. And he said, "You have you know you have old Aunt Betty over there." And she's like, "Oh yes, Amen, Oh Lord." 
You know, so it's just something I've always wanted. To, I've always because I just think it'd be so cool to experience that. They I have, love it. They have that southern. They have yes. that southern hospitality. Um, I've always wanted to go there. Uh, that's yep. that's one. That's one. Uh, one thing I, I want to check off my list. Me, me is, and Nikki met some some Southern Baptist black ladies down mm-hmm. there in Tennessee. Uh-huh. And they're the most loving, kind oh, ladies you'll ever run into. And it doesn't matter if you're a stranger; they're hugging you. Oh, I know. You might even get a smooch on the cheek. You know, you know that's something I've recognized, uh, uh, noticed already. So, I I love I, I don't care who you are. I love I love you guys all. I have I have Hispanics that work for me. Um, if if you come over here and you're you're you come in here and you're trying to better your life, I came from nothing, dude. I, as long as you're trying to work hard, I don't care. I love on you, and so that's something that, man, I notice is when you walk through a Walmart or something, and and so, I have I have a big old booty on myself, okay. <laughs> so, and I and 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 so 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 white girls they'll just look at you, and then black. Like, Oh Lord, that's what they, they'll say out loud. It's just like I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. Are you telling like, me, so, as a former Amish, the black ladies you're hitting on you? Oh, dude, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> like I, I, I go to uh, Columbus quite a bit, uh, and so there's there's quite a few of them down there. And so I, I normally everywhere I go, I have uh, I normally wear a, a cowboy hat, and that's what I wear. Um, everybody knows me like that, um, and it's just what I wear, and. White, white, white girls. They'll, 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 they'll look at you. They won't say anything. Every once in a while, you'll have one, but uh, black, black girls. Man, they will just. Oh, baby, you so look so good. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's so. I think it's, I think it's cool because right. I think more people should be like that. I, right. I, I'll walk, open. I'll walk up to anybody. And be like, hey, you know, just I don't mean nothing by this. You look good today. I, I don't want nothing from you. I just want to say you're beautiful. And you and you just turn and walk, uh, turn and walk away. That's the best thing you can do. And you just brighten up that girl's day. Yeah. And so that's something I do that a lot. Or even I don't care if it's a guy. But like, hey, man, keep up that. No, it's just something. I, 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 I was just be like, I, I just like, hey, you you look good. Keep taking care of yourself. I know. Because what happens is you you just uh, boost his boost his uh, ego, not ego, but you boost his uh, um, confidence in himself. Yeah. And and boom, you just brighten his day. So yeah, that's the best yeah. thing you can do. A lot of people are insecure. Because mm-hmm. of what you know, maybe bullied, mm-hmm. or, and, and they don't they don't view themselves as anything special. Mm-hmm. So I like your approach because, well, first of all, you have no shame in your game. Yep. You'll go up and say whatever, and I love your approach. I really I wish more mm-hmm. people was that yeah. way. And so you see that something. You know how I got over my. Uh, so I, would, I used to be very shy, and if you go back and you know two and a half years ago, and you go back in this videos and stuff on Facebook, whatever it is, uh, I did two of them, and I'm not the same person anymore. Yeah. So how I got over that is. Um, when I go out and about, it doesn't matter. When I go to dinner, uh, say I go to Columbus to dinner, uh, I go uh, just local, wherever. If I go to a nice restaurant, I wear I wear a, uh, a, a like a, a sports coat, a nice dress shirt, and I wear wear a wear a black cap. And what happens is that c- creates conversations, oh. and it sets you apart from everybody everybody else. And so so that's how I got over. Uh, my my insecurities, uh, yeah. my shyness, and now I just I just talk way too much. So you didn't put yourself in a box and stay shy. No, you open and yeah. got out of because it because I I didn't I didn't like who I was, man. And so now uh, I love people. I love I love going out, and meeting new people. I don't like I don't like just hanging around with the same people every week. I right, don't. Right. I, I I'll be friends with uh, I you know I, I have a couple of friends on here watching. Um, I talk to them daily. Uh, yeah. One guy's name is Randy. We talk on a daily basis, um, and we—he's a good friend of mine. We don't see each other every day, but it's something where I like going out and meeting new people. Yeah. Uh, because that what happens is you 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 network. I love networking with people, other other uh, uh, business owners, whatever it might be, uh, and just you just uh, what happens is you start to uh, expand. You your your your. your your mind starts to change. Yeah. And so that's, that's, you just got to get over your insecurities to set yourself apart from everybody else. Right, right. Uh, number one thing, um, when you're insecure, um, I've noticed is I've never really hit the gym. Okay. When you are very insecure, uh, the best thing you can do is go work out. I, I got my gym membership about three months ago now. 
and I've been going uh, every other day or so. And, and what happens is you go in there, and when you start to, uh, you know, physically get better, you mentally start to get better. So that's the best thing you can do. Just wanted to let these dudes know I support the content. Well, thank you. That's good. Thank you very much. Do the Amish and Mennonite get along? I mean, it depends on which community. Some do. <coughs> some do business with each other. Yeah. But I know uh, we didn't hardly do a whole lot of business with them. I mean, especially if they did do business with each other, buy and sell, they really didn't fellowship because mm -hmm. the church was so different. Right. So, um, I don't know if you guys ever did that. So, uh, Kenton, uh, so they have to, Kenton Amish and they have to Kenton Mennonites, okay? So, um, the Mennonites, they come to uh, my parents and they bring, uh, you know, pigs, steers, whatever. We would butcher them for them. Um, and then also there's a, a, a nursing home up in Kenton. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would, I don't know if they still do it, but I remember as a kid, I think it's once a month or twice a year, whatever it was, the Mennonites, they would get together and they would go to the nursing home and sing. Oh, okay. Well, that's Excuse cool. me. And so what we and they would invite us up there. We would go up there and, and listen to them sing, and it was so cool to listen to listen to them because, um, the, the, the you know the guys would sing in the low voice and the women would sing in the high voice and and they harmonized with each other. It was it was just a great which we were not allowed to do. Right, right. That was like too worldly. <laughs> yeah, yep. So now you're hearing the Mennonites doing the two tone. Yeah, yeah the harmonizing yeah. thing. Yeah, so, and it was awesome. that was that was a real. I remember as a kid that was one of the coolest experiences ever to listen to Mennonite people sing. So that's that's as much as we really uh, associate it with them, but we never would like go to their church or yeah. they wouldn't come to our church um, and stuff like that. So, well, to wrap it up, mm -hmm. how about you share your business and what? How can people get a hold of you in the, if they're in the area and they want to hire you to build something? Um, yeah. So if you uh, uh, if you want if you if you need any work done, uh, we do all kinds of roofing and construction. Um, we. Um, you can find us on on Facebook. We have Instagram, uh, TikTok. We have uh, you know I, I don't know if I said Google already. Uh, we have Angie's List. We have I think I have YouTube too. Um, I think my office lady she just created some other stuff. LinkedIn and all kinds of other stuff. LinkedIn, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know half the stuff, but she takes care of all that. But you can just look you know look look up Liberty Roofing. Uh, we're in Russell's Point, Ohio. Um, and so if you need any work done. Um, and then also, you know, my, my phone number's on there. You can give, uh, give, give me or the office a call, uh, and you can reach out to, to somebody and, and get a hold of us. So, so a lot of you that wanted Amish to, uh, come do some good quality work, same thing. Just jump the fence. Still does the same work. <laughs> yeah. We just, uh, we just don't, we just use power tools now, not this, yeah. uh, hand crank. Actually, if you go over and TikTok and stuff, uh, um, one of the tools that we, that's what I grew up, uh, roofing with. Just look up, uh, it should be underneath Liberty Roofing, uh, something. Um, but, uh, it's me up on a roof and we had a, a hand crank, uh, like a, a Yankee. And so I'm, I'm sitting up there screwing away. Uh, with a Yankee yep, pu punching. Yankee, yep. Yankee screwdriver. So it's that's pretty neat. It's yeah, got over so. 2 million views now. Yeah. Something like that. So, yeah. yeah so yeah, if, it, if you want to get a hold of me, just, you know, just, uh, reach out to me on Facebook. And if you have any personal struggles and stuff insecurities i don't care uh reach out to me i'll, I'll help you out I'll, I'll try to help you out you know I'll, I'll talk to you on the phone it doesn't matter um heck you mind if i give my phone number out i don't care so if you want to uh if you want my personal cell number uh you can reach me at uh 937-844-2675 again that phone number is 937-844-2675 that's my personal number that you can text me at uh or you can give me a call but uh, if you want business done, uh, look up uh, Liberty Roofing on Google and give the office a call. So. And we're actually getting ready to use Liberty Roofing to do a project right here where I live at. So, so, yeah, so. reach Please, out to them. Thanks, and, thanks for the business, man. Hey, no so. problem, man. I, I wish I remembered earlier when we was uh, Facebook Live. Oh, yeah. So, hey. Yeah, it's all right. Thank you. Oh, guys, before we hang up, there is two other videos from two years. I think it's a little over yeah, two years. Yeah, something like that. Two years ago or so, I interviewed him twice. And there's two other videos. If you put it in the search bar, uh, do an Amish Q&A with Elmer Miller, you'll yeah. see those as well. So you might, you might be able to tag him in the comments or something. I don't know if you can do that or not. I don't know how to do it. but On YouTube, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know. All right, Elmer. Technology. Thank you very All much right. for doing another right. Amish Q&A with right. me. Thank you, sir. See you guys. All right.